The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations East Umatilla County on your new fire apparatus, job number 34203. Please utilize this five digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting just down in the front bumper area, you'll find the cutouts located in the very center area where you'll find tow hooks located on the passenger and driver's side. Moving up from that location, you'll find two forward-facing emergency warning lights just right and left of the Pierce logo. As we move down, here's the close-up of that tow hook open-ended on the driver's side and, of course, one on the passenger side. As we move to the headlight structure, you'll find your headlights inside location and on the outside, you'll find your turn indicator and marker light. Moving just to the rear of that location, you'll find a side-facing emergency warning light. Let's take a look upward from this location where you'll find your air inlet for the engine. And then as we move to the rear section of the fender well, you'll find the release mechanism on the passenger and driver side to open the hood. You'll also find at the very top section of the fender a turn indicator. Let's take a look at your Alcoa wheels with Michelin tires. As we move now to the step area where you'll find your aluminum fuel tank and you'll also find your ultra low sulfur diesel fuel cap, which is silver. Next to it, you'll find your blue DEF tank. And as we move just up from this location above the step, you'll find step lights and also your battery location. Let's move inside to the door area. We're going to access via the driver's door. On the driver's door panel, you'll find all of your caution and warning labels located on the door panel. As we move to the seat itself, you'll find comfort control, air ride seat, and also adjustable front to back. You'll also find your battery switch located on the floor. One turn will click the batteries on and turn around will click the batteries off. As we move to the placard, you'll find this manufactured by Pierce for East Umatilla County. And you'll find your date of manufacture, five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, all of your fluid and fluid capacity types located on this placard. Let's move now to the forward area. We will find on the left hand side this black placard indicating the height, length and gross vehicle weight rating of your vehicle. If you make any changes, please update it. Your vehicle does have a key to ignition. It's down in the lower left hand corner. As we move up, you'll find controls here for cruise control and coast. Let's move to the dash area. On the left hand side, you'll find your transmission, water and oil temperature. On the right hand side, you'll find DEF level, fuel level, front air and rear air. In the center, you'll find your tachometer and speedometer. Diagnostic information for your apparatus displays in the window above. Let's move now just to the right of this location where you'll find your air filter minder. This will indicate the level of uh, flow within your air filter. To the right hand side, you'll find your automatic traction control switch. And just beneath that, you'll find your Allison transmission pad. It does have a digital readout. As we move just to the right, you'll find a few indicators here. First, pump engaged, OK to pump, and OK to pump and roll. To the right, you'll find the yellow diamond, which is pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. Just to the right, we've got a few switches here. These are going to be your PTO for your pump. And then also to the very far right hand side, you'll find a digital readout here to provide information. And then all the way to the very far right, you'll find some uh, annunciators, which are going to be do not move your apparatus. You may have a compartment or door open. Moving it downward from this location, we're going to find a set of switches here. This is going to be for your axle, interlock, and also mirror heat, DPF regen. And then on the far right hand side, you'll find seat belt information, green indicating someone is in the seat and belted, red indicating they are not belted. To the right, you'll find an OK to engage the high idle, and then also a battery indicator. Down at the very bottom, you'll find climate control. On the very top section, you'll find your backup monitor for the camera to the rear. As we move back down to where the cup holders are, you'll find power outlets, 12 volt barrel style. You'll also find just inward of that location, your electric windows for passenger and driver's side. And in the very center, you'll find your automatic door locks. As we move to the center console, you'll find map book storage location. As we move overhead, we'll find a few switches here. Let's identify a few of those starting on the left hand side first starting with your emergency master. When any of these switches have been engaged, the indicator in the center will illuminate. 
Just to the right of the Emergency Master, you'll find your Lower Zone, Rear Zone, Siren or Horn Selector, your Tire Chain Switch, which is protected, and also your Dump Valve for the Rear. Just to the right, we'll find another set of switches. These are going to be your Rear Scene, Left Scene, Right Scene, and then a Dump Master. Let's move further to the right where you're going to find your siren control and PA speaker system. Let's move outside now to the exterior of the vehicle where we'll start at the very bottom just under the running board. As we look underneath the running board you'll find uh, clearance lights located all the way around for your perimeter. You'll also find your drains in addition with at the very top section an air inlet. You'll also find a placard regarding the type of pump that you have which is a hail. Moving just to the right of this location, you'll find the two and a half inch female auxiliary inlet for the driver's side. Moving to the right, when plugged into shore power, your auto charge system will illuminate. As you can see, you're plugged in. We do have power going to that auto charge system. Just beneath that, you'll find your main pump drain. And then further to the right, the yellow module. This is gonna be your auto eject shore power inlet. Let's move up from this location. Couple of items here. First, two and a half inch discharge. You can see it's red in color, clearly labeled. Moving to the right, you'll find it's capped. This is your large diameter pump intake. And then as we move to the upper right hand corner, you'll find your fire pump primer. It is a push to prime. There are instructions just to the left of that placard, which will indicate at least 1000 RPMs for best practices for pulling a draft. Let's take a look just underneath. This is the hail water pump that you have. It's the placard regarding the type of pump. As we move to the right, once again, you'll find your auto charge system. But I would like to point out in the upper left, there is a warning label regarding pressure hazard. Be cautious when opening caps, they may be under pressure. These were close-ups of the items that we were just talking about. First, once again, at the top, the two and a half inch discharge. And then further to the right, you'll find your primer and also that instructions regarding minimum of 1000 RPMs for best practices. Let's move now up to the next section where you'll find your engine cooler. This is a twist, not a pull. You'll also find all of your discharges. They're clearly color coded and also labeled number one and number two crosslay. And to the right in red, you'll find the number one driver's side discharge. Moving further to the right, we're gonna find the number two passenger side discharge and then the green large diameter passenger side discharge. As we move further to the right, we'll find a few more valves here. Let's first discover at the very top your tank fill and recirculating line. Just beneath that, you'll find your tank to pump. And then we'll go ahead and move up to the next area. This is going to be your master gauges. On the left-hand side, you have a pump discharge master gauge. Just down from that, you'll find your master pump intake gauge. Moving to the right, you'll find the blue module, which is your water tank level for indications for full three quarter, half quarter and refill. Just beneath that, you'll find the vacuum and pressure test gauge ports. They are currently plugged. Let's move slightly to the right to the very top section. You'll find a panel light switch allowing you to activate panel lights for this area. You'll also find to the right your pump boss, which is your pressure throttle governor. If illuminated, it would be a check engine light. and It would be yellow. In the center, you'll find the digital readout for the RPMs, and then to the right, if illuminated, it would be red in color. It is a stop engine light. As we move downward on your pump boss, you'll find the menu, which is the blue button, which allows you to scroll through the various menu functions of your pump boss. Located in the center, you'll find diagnostic engine information, and then moving all the way to the right, you'll find a red silence button. This allows you to silence the audible alarm. Moving downward, we'll find the two yellow buttons, either pressure or RPM. Those are your two modes that you have options for, pressure or throttle mode. Once you've engaged, the light will illuminate, indicating which mode you're in. You'll also find a digital readout for that menu information. To the right, you'll find a green throttle ready indicator. And then just beneath that, if you choose, you can utilize presets for pressure or RPM. Down at the very bottom, you'll find the throttle, right to increase and left to decrease. Push in the center for the idle position. As we move downward, just outside of the pump boss, you'll find a black speaker. That is going to be the audible alarm. The outer edge of that bezel does allow you to dampen or increase the sound. You'll also find an indicator OK to pump, meaning that your pump is properly engaged. Let's move further to the right. Well, you'll find this information regarding your minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. 
You'll find on the left the associated GPM and on the right the RPMs. You'll also find that this vehicle does have a govern speed of 2,400 RPMs. You'll also find a warning label. Only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment and only after they've received proper training. Let's move just to the upper left hand corner of the pump panel area where you'll find the number one crosslay and then also the number two crosslay. These are two active crosslays. As you move just to the right, you'll find a dead lay indicating that it is not pre-connected. Let's move now to the upper section where we'll find a water tank level indicator. Next to that, you'll find your side scene lights in the very front section and there's also one in the very rear of this location also. Down at the very bottom, you'll find a marker light just in front of the rear axle. You'll also find a side-facing emergency warning light in the lower section of this Pandora area where you'll find your SCBA bottle storage location. In the upper right-hand side of the image, you'll find a side-facing scene light along with an emergency warning light. Just in front of the rear axle is where you'll find your storage location for your wheel chocks. As we move to the very first compartment, you'll find a pull-out tray that releases on the lower right. You'll also find, when plugged into shore power, your battery charging system and also air compressor will activate. The release mechanism, once again, on the lower tray is on the lower right-hand side. As we move in between the axles, you'll find that emergency warning light and then access inside for your SCBA bottle storage location for two bottles with retaining straps. The rear axles do have Michelin tires and Alcoa wheels also. And as we move to the very rear compartment, you'll find a roll-up door in the very rear section with inside an adjustable shelf and then also LED lighting. Let's move from this location to the very rear of the apparatus. First, starting down at the very corner, you'll find emergency warning light, brake, turn, and also reverse lights. Then underneath that, you'll find emergency warning lights also. You do have a rear-facing tank indicator, and then also at the very top, you have your two rear scene lights. Let's move back down to where the ladder area is. This is a close-up here, emergency brake, turn, and also uh, emergency light down at the very bottom section. License plate location, inside of that location, you're gonna find a set of switches here. First, we'll find the hose bed lights, and then also the rear dump chute. As we look to the rear, we're gonna find clearance lights located at the very bottom, and then also a tether attachment. Located upward, you'll find tow hook locations. These are gonna be closed tow hooks attached to the frame rail. As we move upward from this location on each side just above the brake lights is where you'll find an additional Pandor housing your rigid suction hose. There's one on the left hand side and also one on the right. You'll also find these warning labels here regarding fall hazard. Never ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. You'll also find a fall hazard. When climbing on the ladder you should face the ladder itself and climb utilizing the grab holds and footsteps. And also to the right, you'll find an entanglement hazard warning. Close-ups of the items we just talked about. This is that rear-facing tank level water indicator. You also have side-facing scene lights and emergency warning light. As we move just in between the ladder, you'll find a rear-facing scene light. Let's move down to the dump valve where you'll find located directly in the center. At the very top section, you'll find the air system which controls the dump valve, controlled from either the rear or inside the cab. You'll also find the ability to swivel the rear dump and also extend outward your rear dump to the side or further to the rear. As we move to the passenger side of the vehicle in the rear, you'll find a direct tank fill, which is a two and a half inch female ball valve. Moving also to the very center section we mentioned earlier, these are the two attachment points here or tow hooks located and attached to the frame rail. At the very top, you'll find your backup camera located within its cover area and you'll also find, once again, rear-facing scene lights. Let's move around and take a look at the bottom section here where we have that storage tube for your rigid suction hose. Let's move around to the passenger side where we'll find a side-facing emergency warning light, and then just in front of that location, you'll find a side-facing scene light. Moving downward from this location on the passenger side is where you'll also find your porta tank behind the American flag. As we move through the compartment, same configuration as the driver's side. We have a roll-up door inside. We have LED lighting and also an adjustable shelf.
Moving down to the bottom, the two axles in the rear are going to have Alcoa wheels and also Michelin tires. As we move to the center between the two axles, you'll find that emergency warning light and two SCBA bottle storage locations with retaining straps. Let's go back underneath the rear axle where you'll find your chains. You can see that these are controlled from the switch in the cab. Also moving forward, we've got a roll-up door just in front of the rear axle. Inside this compartment, you'll find LED lighting and also an adjustable shelf and ventilation. Let's go ahead and move now to the midsection of the passenger area pump panel. Starting at the very top section, you'll find a light and then also a Pandora, which is a lift and turn latch to go into the top area of the pump. Just beneath that, you'll find your large diameter passenger side discharge. You'll also find your large diameter inlet just beneath that, and then to the right, you'll find your rack control. This is to lower and raise your equipment rack. Beneath that, you'll find a two and a half inch discharge, and across the very bottom, you'll find all your color-coded and labeled discharge drains. Let's go back up to the powered equipment rack. We do have instructions on that for to raise and also to lower. Let's go back up to the top portion where we'll find that lift and turn panel here. This gains access into the top portion of the pump for maintenance purposes. Above this area, you'll find your dead lay and number one and number two cross lays. As we move now to the step area, you'll find step lighting on all steps at points of entry. Let's go uh, now to the cab itself where we'll find a grab handle on the rear wall of the cab. In addition with easily accessible gloved handles to gain access inside the cab with keyed locks. As we move above that, you'll find a flat mirror and a convex mirror in the lower section. And then as we move just inside the cab, we'll find a couple of warning labels here regarding slip hazard. Be cautious when climbing in and out of the cab. As we move to the floor area, you'll also find an electronic siren foot pedal. And as we move back to the door panel itself, you'll find all of your warning labels and information here for safety. Let's move back to the door itself where you'll find your door logo. And then we'll move from this location back to the mirror area where we'll find a flat mirror on the top and a convex mirror on the lower section. As we move to the front wheel, you'll find Alcoa wheels and Michelin tires once again. Moving back up to the fender area where you'll find the release mechanism for gaining access into the hood. Remember, both passenger and driver's side need to be released. You'll also find your turn marker indicator at the top of the fender. As we move to the forward section, congratulations East Umatilla County, Oregon on your new Pierce Fire apparatus, job number 34203. If you have any questions regarding your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.